What's the case for these people trying to get all the extra carbohydrates in? Well, you don't really need carbohydrates at all. Let's put it this way. Mm. I think it's a it's it's a myth that you need. Your body can actually produce all the glucose you need from um, gluconeogenic precursors, whether they are amino acid ones or they're the backbone of the um, triglyceride backbone, which is the the glycerol backbone. You know, so that's pretty much what you basically need uh, for that purpose, and the body will actually furnish that. And let's not forget the actual, you know, the three cog system that Bart explains. Um, so you've got your ATP production, which basically then when you you release that phosphate from, that phosphate will actually go into that cycle, which is the, um, the phosphate creatine cycle, and it will take that and then re- and then um, pass it on, pass that phosphate on to the other reaction at the other end where the filaments are, so it can actually then release that and produce the required, you know, provide furnish the required um, glucose to convert the glycogen to prov- provide that glucose for those filaments to do that those contractile um, functions, and then from that it'll when it releases that ATP and, release, and it releases that energy, that phosphate will actually go back and cycle back into the other part. So it's it's sort of these three core, three gears that are interlinked, you know, cycling, recycling phosphates, you know, pretty much. And so when you understand that, you understand this, this ideal. At the end of the day, you know, when we're talking about you know, what have we got in our body? You know, do we have enough uh, um, NAD? Do um, are we being are we losing electrons because other things? Are, you know, there's reaction or oxidative stress too much, which is bleeding away and taking away some of these um, electrons. Are you earthing to get some more that you're missing out, so you can actually um, provide additional free electrons? To stabilise tissue, so you're not, so you then are able to support the redox potential, the energy production um, systems. Because so, all this, you have to think of the body as a holistic whole that it's interacting, and all these molecules can really go here, there, anywhere. It's like whatever, even stem cells can go anywhere, depending on where the the tissue requires it. So, the body is all these reactions, all these things happening at the same time. And it's, you know, it's all really worked out really well and it's all transcripted um, in your genes, you know, for certain things to to be produced at a certain time um, based on the signalling that the body's getting. You know, if we give the body the inappropriate things, then we may create confusion in terms of communication or whatever. We call it the Randall cycle. You know, other people call it... um, insulin resistance, which is a construct of the Randall cycle. Um, you know, so, and this, the severity of the insulin resistance is a gradient of the Randall cycle, to sort of uh, explain it in that way. But generally speaking, we have a lot of confusion about how the body works and, you know, but I go back to sort of basics um, and say, what does the archaeological evidence show us? And as far as I'm concerned, the archaeological evidence shows us that for the majority of the existence of Homo sapiens and the species, the closest related species, it's pretty much been um, meat. You know, that's what the N15 data shows. That's what, um, uh, you know, and we're talking about glacial periods because the majority, you know, of our existence as a species and that of those related species has pretty on this planet has been pretty much in glacial periods where all the way down to the tropics you had ice and over many parts of the land you had kilometers of ice which then sort of flooded caused the the big floods that we talk about 12,000 years ago when that melted off the the continents um, we don't have that sort of amount, so it's never going to happen again. So people are delusional about the modern stuff. But anyway, we won't get into that. 
Um, but uh, those interglacial periods are very small in the history of, of our species. So the majority of time we have been basically gnawing on, um, you know, those animals, those four-legged creatures of different types in different periods of time, you know, that have existed. Uh, so for me, all this nonsense, if glucose was so essential um, that we couldn't furnish enough through these inexpensive hydrolysis type enzymatic steps, because that's what it is. It's a very low energy conversion. Doesn't require a lot of energy. The, this is basic 101 bi, um, bio um, physiology. You can actually get a physiology book, open it up and look it for, up yourself and actually find out exactly the enzymes that are involved and how much energy they use. It's very low compared to many other enzymatic reactions inside the body that are much more expensive in many cases. So, you know, people need to get this out of their head that gluconeogenesis is an expensive um, process. That is a whole lot of nonsense um, created by the Ray Pete fan club and a lot of vagoons out there. It's nonsense. It's not based on science. It's based on ideology, as Bart would say. You know, gluconeogenesis yeah. is not an expensive process. It is actually a very cheap process. It's also handy that something like about 50% of amino acids are gluconeogenic. So if they weren't meant to be gluconeogenic, exactly. why'd there be so much of them? Doesn't make exactly. sense. Actually, actually, the the majority are, the majority mm. are, you know, um, you've only the the pure the pure um keto um, ke, um ketogenic type um amino acids is just leucine and lysine. That's it. Mm. You know, even the other ones, even some of the other ones like trip, tryptophan, um, and a couple of others that also have um, ketogenic sort of, they're also, they, there's a, a couple of them that are basically dual type, um, in that regard, alanine is another one that basic, basically is, is a, a dual one as well. And that, those are the big ones, you know, sort of that are, that the body will use tryptophan and alanine primarily for both and that, but the majority of all mm. the other ones, you know, like glutamate, where there's quite a lot in collagen, you know, or connective tissue, you may eat it from an animal, proline, all that sort of stuff, arginine, all that, a lot of that sort of stuff is just basically all to produce as, can be used as precursors for gluconeogenesis. You know, so to say that the body has difficulty or can't produce sufficient or it's very expensive, it's just absolutely nonsense. It's not borne out in the books of physiology. So it just shows an absolute ignorance, the physiology, by some of these people. I can't explain any other way because there's a whole lot of other enzymatic processes in the body, catalytic um, reactions, that require far more energy. So how can somebody claim, like, to produce, um, you know, even cholesterol, which all the um, uh, the goons say, oh, it's, you know, that requires slightly more energy. So mm. that's fine for you not to eat cholesterol so you can produce it yourself, but you've got an issue with gluconeogenesis, which is actually a cheaper way of actually producing energy. Are you joking? Are you kidding? Are you having me on? Because it's really pretty much it's ignorance. These people are just ignorant, simple as that. And Bart's right, you know, there's so too many buffoons, buffoon influences, as I call them. And I think he would agree with me. There's far too many of them out there. If you don't know something, keep your mouth shut because you're likely to put your mouth in your, your, your foot in your mouth. Yes, a lot of them are suffer from something like um, influence of foot and mouth disease. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 frustrating cause. Um yeah, I appreciate you explaining that so well. I mean, to go for a whole protein masterclass from the epigenetics of it, the different intakes, different people, um, 
the, the objections you might have to high protein intakes. It all makes sense to me. So uh, thanks for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Build muscle and lose fat on the carnivore diet. <laughs>